Hello friends, today I want to show you a comparison between two fantastic lenses. These are the Nikkor 35mm 1.4 AES and the Nikkor 35mm 1.4 G. So, these two lenses are two lenses that I use a lot. So, the goal of the comparison is not to tell you and uh, this lens is best, this lens is best, this is really unimportant. What I want you to know is um, the difference between them because if you're planning to get any of these um, you will know uh, for sure you will make an informed decision in whether you will get this one or this one and uh, depending on your photography needs so before uh, going further into comparisons talking about price or whatever I will show you just a few pictures I made with these two lenses so you can get already an idea of the potential and the kind of things you can do with them. So hello friends, I am back and you saw what these lenses are capable of. Now uh, we're going to um, dive a bit into the specifics of these lenses. To do so, uh, I'm going to start uh, simply with the focal length of 35 millimeters. Why uh, it is so nice, what is so important? Well, the thing is we human beings um, have at this in full frame a uh, field of view which is equivalent to about uh, 43 millimeters. So people usually say uh, 50 millimeters is the equivalent to um, what we humans see, but then 35 millimeters is also uh, very close to that. They're actually quite equivalent. So this means that uh, photos that are taken at 35 millimeters uh, look very natural to us, and then we we have a tendency to enjoy uh, them a lot. And then uh, other advantage uh, of um, 35 millimeters in contrary to 50 millimeters is that uh, the field of B or, or the depth of field is quite large. So even uh, wide open, we can have an image which is sharp, and then have really really interesting composition. So this is the first thing, and then this is one reason why um, 35 millimeters has been used for a really really long time in photojournalism uh, and then street photography so uh, and speaking of long time we're going to talk about the AES version and then uh, the previous version so this version came um, came out in 1969 or in the 60s uh, with this uh, optical recipe and then it has been around for a really long time it has been uh, in uh, photojournalism for a long time it has been even in space because uh, NASA even ordered a few of these 35 mm 1.4 well especially made uh, so uh, astronauts uh, could use them mm. and then they went to, to space and then they took some photos in space uh, and then uh, this lens got an update in 2010 and then it's in the form of this lens and then here you have the optical recipe and there is one element difference otherwise um, the recipes uh, look a bit similar um, the new version has an spherical element so it will be uh, sharper and it will have more uniformity in the frame so this we'll see just after then otherwise um, both have uh, nine blades on the diaphragm so uh, the bokeh is going to be quite nice on both lenses. Okay, besides that, uh, you see that there is obvious a size difference and then uh, there is a difference in weight. This lens is 400 grams, this big guy is 600 grams. And then, uh, as you notice, um, I've been speaking about both lenses in present tense and then this means that both lenses can be both new uh, and then I even checked because I wasn't very sure about the AES version and then I checked it uh, a few hours ago on the Nikon website and then here 
you get um, an image of the Nikon website and then uh, the thing you can see is that you can actually order it but then uh, you see that it's, uh, it's not a cheap lens and then this lens obviously is new so you can also buy it and then I share with you what I found on the Nikon website and then again you see that it's not really a cheap lens um, but then there is always the, the second hand, hand alternative and then um, well, they are not cheap either on uh, second hand but then um, yeah if you're lucky you can find one really really inexpensive uh, and then uh, the radio of price between the new so this one being two-thirds of the price of the of the new one is almost kept in a second-hand market so you will find this one for example if you pay the I don't know and nine hundred dollars this one you will find it for six hundred probably five hundred so this is quite uh, ubiquitous from uh, what I could so uh, by checking on eBay and different uh, selling websites okay um, otherwise and um, this is all I have to say about the construction of these lenses probably yes I prefer uh, the manual version since it is all metal and then it's going to last forever and the new version has a bit of plastic the motor is built in and um, so um, I'm pretty sure at some point in the future is going to die to die whereas this lens well kept it can keep going on forever so and uh, this is all I have to say about the um, construction now we're going to move directly to the comparisons so see you in a few seconds so hello friends I am back I am ready for the comparison and then as a first topic of comparison I choose night photography why because for me uh, a 35 millimeters 1.4 is a creature of the night it doesn't matter if it is the nikon 35 mm 1.4 aes or the 1.4 g version for me these lenses have to live in the night and then produce excellent night photography and then and this is the case here i took these pictures in my town the other day and the only thing i did in terms of post processing was to change the white balance of the images as they had like a nasty tint which was due to the, yeah, to the street lights, which I didn't really like. So I changed the white balance of both images and then I did some work trying to get the colors to match so we can do a fair comparison between them. So first thing you're going to notice between these two images is that the 1.4G looks quite sharp all over the frame and then this is normal this is something we actually expected this is principally due to the aspherical element which is doing a lot of corrections on the image and then it's able to produce these very nice results and then sharpness everywhere here on the left we have the AES version and then it doesn't have an aspherical element so we see that on the edge of the image we are not really 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 sharp everywhere but uh, for me this is not a big deal actually because in this kind of image it gives like a sense of mystery to the image that i actually like a lot so for me it's not a big deal now if we take a closer look here we see some interesting things uh, regarding the lights the street lights so as you can see here they have uh, they're completely blown out which uh, gives an interesting effect i don't i don't i cannot explain to you why it is and uh, that they do this so i think it has something to do with the um, spherical aberration which as you can appreciate here the uh, focusing was actually done in regard to these three here for both lenses so we have a point of comparison and then uh, what you see here with the ES version is that the even though uh, everything looks like sharp in the frame there is like a bail on the image here for example here on the on the pole here there is something like veiling the image and then this is principally a spherical aberration that we don't have here on the 
G version. So sometimes and this thing might come handy and give some interesting effects as here. Here in this case, I actually like it. And then as I was telling you before, you can see here uh, the AS version and uh, you see actually looks quite sharp if you compare to here but then this kind of veil that appears and then uh, gives the impression that a sharpness is not there and then obviously here towards the frame as I, as I mentioned it before you don't have any sharpness at all so this is for the two lenses now if we move to uh, just let me move something here if we move now to f2 yeah you just saw that uh, orange tint that i had to remove uh, it gets up sometimes when you're loading images and then now that we move to f2 you see that there is an immediate change uh, on the AES version so we stop it down uh, one stop and then the image has changed significantly and then you can see here that now it has become really 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 sharp uh, and then uh, as I told you before these lenses are to be creatures of the night and then these images were taken just for your information uh, f2 this we have ISO 100 and then and the exposition was 1.6 second and then at 1.4 was one second so as you can see we can get this kind of exposure with a 35 millimeters 1.4 in both versions at exposure times is only one second and ISO 100 which is this is quite impressive for these lenses and then this is for me one of the principal interests of getting these lenses so we have here uh, as i told you before um, the yes has become uh, really really sharp uh, over the frame not as sharp obviously at the 1.4 g version but then uh, in general both images i like them a lot and then what i wanted to show you before is now that the these blown out lights that were appearing at 1.4 with the as version just simply disappear and then they are giving now just nice pointy starts you have 18 points which are related to the uh, nine blades of the lens so um, now uh, we can move to 2.8 so here um, for me it's getting a bit unacceptable apertures for night photography since we're reaching our now uh, exposure times of four seconds but then uh, what I wanted to show you here is that the 1.4 AES version now is delivering really, really nice images. As you can see, it's very sharp, a bit everywhere. It's producing really, really nice and uh, pointy starts uh, with 18 points, as I told you before, and due to the nine uh, blades of the diaphragm. Here, the 1.4 G, G version is producing some kind of weird uh, starts there less beautiful i would say and then here we can see well there's a bit of difference in the color rendition but then as i change the white balance this is not something i can uh, take on so we can probably see that in, in the comparison just after which takes into account a really close up of these lenses and then the bokeh which is something we haven't checked at all yet so before moving into that uh, we'll take uh, a look at f4 for both lenses and then we can see that um, there is actually no no big improvement in both of them they are really really good and they are performing really well and it's still nice pointy starts big points now for the for the 1.4 AES and then here and uh, the G version is producing a uh, nice stars now but then they still have uh, some kind of strange shape so my verdict regarding at least night photography uh, i cannot tell you which one is best because they both have uh, their advantages obviously the g version is sharper this i cannot deny it 
but then the, the, the point starch it produces are not really really nice this is probably because of the shape of the diaphragm here the ES version produce really really nice results and then if you really need like an extremely extremely fast lens I would say the G version we go back to the 1.4 uh, aperture and then here we will get an image which is really really good and then sharp all over the frame and then with the 1.4 AES we can get an image which has some mystery kind of fuzzy on the edges and then if we stop down to F2 we get already the sharpness and then we start getting like fantastic point stars so this is all I wanted to show you regarding the night photography now we're going to move to a comparison where we check the lens at really really close distance and then we'll see a bit the color rendition and the bokeh so see you in a few seconds I put the lens in the minimum focus and distance which uh, for the 1.4 AES and 1.4 G is about 30 centimeters or one foot and then um, I started taking these images uh, at maximum aperture here 1.4 here 1.4 here and then uh, the kind of things we want to look here is obviously the bokeh and uh, the color rendition of both lenses and then uh, the sharpness is also uh, a plus then before starting into that uh, there is one thing we already noticed straight away and then this is that the 35 1.4 AES is slightly wider than the 1.4 G we can see here regarding the size of the dolls even though the focus and distance is exactly the same since I only changed lenses I didn't move tripod or uh, the dolls at all so this is the first thing to notice so this lens the yes is slightly wider then uh, I made uh, this photo taking uh, the focusing around the hand of this doll here and then we can see already that there is a difference here and uh, the 1.4 G uh, being a bit sharper and then this is something we were expecting so this is not a big surprise then if we go back and we start starting the thing a bit more uh, deeply and uh, we can see that uh, the color rendition so the colors are not exactly the same the 1.4 G is slightly warmer at least in this lightning setting which is um, natural light coming from the back there was a window behind uh, and then um, this is one of the things we noticed too and then finally a um, big thing we see in this picture is the bokeh bubbles here we can see that they are both around this one's been slightly bigger but then if you ask me and then this is personally my opinion I prefer these bokeh bubbles with this kind of solid solid rim uh, around them I think it makes a nice effect and then here these are nice but uh, they are not very pronounced but then this always depends on the setting so this is for 1.4 then if we move um, to f2 with both lenses just let me get that here trying to move something here so I don't mess with that and then here and uh, we move to f2 here now and then for the 1.4 AES we can already see the shape of the uh, diaphragm even though uh, both lenses have uh, nine blades both uh, we can see that uh, here on the 1.4 G they're for sure rounded as we can barely perceive that uh, there is something going on here regarding the shape whereas here and uh, we can see clearly that, that they're taking the shape of the diaphragm and uh, regarding um, sharpness so here we come to the hand uh, and then here we don't see a big difference the 1.4 AES being still softer but then um, I have one comment on that and then the thing is and uh, sharpness is not always good because if you're for example doing portraits and uh, very sharp images will mean 
later for you that you will have to remove uh, blemishes from the face of your customer or the person you're taking a photography of whereas here with a soft lens um, the rendition of the skin for example will be rather natural so i want to be quick here because we have many 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 things to check regarding this lens so let's remove this here i move to f2.8 so and here not big changes so only difference is the bokeh bubbles become smaller still the 1.4 g being sharper a lot sharper we can check here the hand uh, we can see that there is no big changes so what i'm going to do is to jump to f4 see uh, what is going on so the 1.4 g got a lot sharper the 1.4 as uh, still hanging on but uh, not totally here there uh, and then we can see now that the 1.4 g is very contrasted but then if you ask me i like both images a lot okay here we can see that the bulking bubbles are already starting to take uh, a geometric shape and then here as before the geometric shape is already there so let us go further and then we have 5.6 here then both images are coming into frame nicely i like this a lot okay bubbles now are exactly or almost the same size here and then we come and check no surprises here uh, the 1.4 g is extremely sharper the aes is becoming sharp but uh, not there but then is this really important i'm not really sure okay and then here i go to f8 now both images are really really sharp and then we lost the bokeh on the back and then we can see that um, the back of the image with the 1.4 g is uh, a bit softer than here and then this is also related i think with the um, fact that we have these solid rims about the bokeh bubbles that uh, provides kind of contrast to the background okay so this is all for close-up image to finish your comparison nicely i took my two lenses my tripod my camera put a good pair of shoes and then went hiking into the woods to make these pictures this bit of landscape and then here and we can see something we haven't seen yet especially on the this branch here here we have um, as usual on this side the Nikkor 35mm 1.4 AS and here we get the 1.4 G version and then uh, this branch shows something really interesting and that is that the 1.4 G version suffers quite a bit from chromatic aberration when there is quite strong contrast here we have the branch against this uh, waterfall which is uh, just on the back but otherwise um, both images as is usual with these lenses um, look quite nice so we can actually make a small zoom uh, and then here we had this tree covered with moss and then I have to say uh, here in this case I like the rendition of both lenses but uh, probably a bit more the 1.4 AES as uh, the mouse here looks rather more natural than here on the 1.4 G looks quite uh, too much contrasty here uh, on the 1.4 AES you see it looks uh, quite nice very 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 natural the trees and um, here i forgot to mention we are at 1.4 and then uh, i kind of like this ethereal look you get uh, from the 1.4 aes and then here as before we already saw that on the other pictures around the edge of the image the sharpness of the lens is not that good 
but not that it really matters especially for natural uh, images like this we don't care about sharpness on the rim of the picture there is something interesting here that you probably noticed or haven't noticed yet and then here uh, just before we saw these bokeh bubbles that had a kind of rim around them uh, on the AS version whereas on G version there was really smooth and then here we find this again this actually leaves for tree and then we can see that it gets it produces this quite nice effect on the background giving like some type of random noise to the background which I really like here okay so that's for this part I kept walking until I found this place and this is a dam at the end of the forest and then at some point there was some people here here we have uh, as I mentioned before the 1.4 uh, AES and then here the G version I took these pictures of the edge of this dam here there is a small uh, artificial waterfall and then they're making electricity here quite a nice place and then here this was in full day not a sunny day I think I actually at the end I had to run to the car because uh, it was raining but then here you get a um, kind of a landscape picture done with these lenses so the AES version as before here we are at 1.4 has as usual this ethereal look given um, by the spherical aberration but then in all I have to say the image is quite sharp on the frame obviously not as sharp as the 1.4G but this thing we know already this is a big difference between the two lenses here uh, we have a small difference on the color rendition but then here I have to say for this quite natural image um, it's nice having here everything crispy and sharp even on the edges since we have all these details of leaves um, around so now we're going to jump I think it's pointless to okay now I'm going to show you anyway F2 so because here I have to with the 1.4 AES there is always a big surprise because the lens changed completely his behavior and then uh, looks quite good so and then this is the proof here we're in the corner of the image and then we have this element of the dam I don't know what it does and then you see all these small lines that are quite actually sharp in both lenses and then here the G version obviously being sharper than his uh, older sibling so here we can take a look at the leaves here okay still a bit fuzzy but uh, the image in general goes really good so since we're in uh, plain daylight we can take a look directly at high apertures well small apertures I would say so we jump to f8 this we can afford here we have good daylight and then these are apertures I haven't showed to you yet and then here we can see we get really really nice images of both lenses and then here at these big apertures well at f8 there's still some difference here especially in the corner of pole dances we can see the grass here which is really really nice but then if we move more towards the center I think the difference between both lenses is uh, is pretty much gone well you're able to see the difference right me because I cannot especially here in the center of the image and then don't tell me the difference is these people here because <laughs> that's just silly you see we even the, the small writing here it looks really really good then uh, just to finish we'll take a look at the two 
biggest apertures no smallest apertures actually we can get so here we have f11 we start having here a kind of long exposure with both lenses but then i would i would say at f11 difference between two lenses both lenses is gone and then at f16 i think there is no difference at all and then as i always say any any lens whatever good or bad it is uh, f16 is going to produce a uh, good results so this is all i wanted to show you today thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and to put a like into the video and then comment if you have anything to say about this either if you like it or not so see you next time huh?